Hey guys, Tiffany Ophelia Porter here, where I discuss all things life after sports. As you can see, I have my loctician, Melissa, here again <laughs> for part four in our Loctician Speaks series. You guys have been loving this series, so I'm just going to keep it going. And Melissa has been so gracious to join us in on this conversation. And in this video, we are going to be listing out the 10 key differences between sister locks and micro locks. That's a question I get all the time. So let's just go ahead and jump right into it. You ready, Melissa? I am. Okay. Number one difference between sister locks and micro locks is the tool in which you use to install the locks. And Melissa can show you kind of here what an actual sister lock tool looks like. Mm -hmm. I have this one that we use. That's not the traditional pattern tool. Um, and then the one that is, is this one. You see this little hook here is what is actually doing the interlocking. That's the actual pattern sister lock tool. And this is the actual sister lock tool, okay? And we've talked about it in videos before, but <laughs> that is a key part of the brand of sister locks is that tool and melissa does sometimes use a different tool to do some of my retightenings i do i i, I do so i also like to use this one which is the yes and i mean <laughs> i have sister locks so the retightening tool that she chooses to use doesn't really matter per uh -huh. se i think that's more important in the establishment right melissa it is but it's it's, it's your grid pattern Yes. It's just that grid pattern, being able to maintain it. Yep. We'll, we'll, we'll come to that as one of the key differences between sister locks and micro locks. But with micro locks, they don't necessarily have to be established using um, interlocking. They can be established with braids. Mm -hmm. They can be established with twists. Mm -hmm. And obviously, if you start your locks with twists or braids, it's going to give you a slightly different look once they mature than your traditional sister locks. So even though they might still kind of to the naked eye from afar look like sister lock when you come up on them you'll be able to tell that distinction right melissa well yeah they're all they're all our form of micro locks and it's just that that base that you look at that yeah you'll see yeah and then with the micro locks another key difference is that the loctician doesn't need to be certified there's like not a true official certification process within the micro lock community the way that you have with sister locks correct yes we've talked a, bit, a little bit before about the difference between a sister lock trainee and a sister lock consultant mm -hmm. and essentially just to kind of recap uh, they have to go through a rigorous amount of training from the sister lock website mm -hmm. they go through a course yep yep and then in and order then they have to turn in three qualifying heads to be considered a trainee to be considered a consultant okay that's to right. be considered at a so once you finish the class you're considered to be a trainee and then once you turn in one qualifying head, you're considered to be an approved trainee. Mm. And then once you get all three heads turned in, then you are an, an consultant. Got it. Yep. So that is one distinction. As far as I know, I do not believe they have those different distinctions within the micro lock community. Mm -mm. I don't even think it's it. The micro lock community is not even regulated by anything. It's kind of just like braids, yeah. like how you have braiders out here that do different braids. You have people who do different micro locks. Yep. Number two key difference between micro locks and sister locks is the size consistency. So with sister locks, they're going to be uniform in size due to that specific grid pattern that Melissa just mentioned that is established and is paramount during that installation process, mm -hmm. right? And then with micro locks, because there is not necessarily as much of an emphasis on that grid pattern, the sizes of the locks may vary depending on the installer's technique and their own preferences. Very true. So sometimes you might see, and I think this actually kind of is the case in my head too, correct me if I'm wrong, Melissa, but sometimes the front can be a little bit smaller than the back. It always is. <laughs> yeah. I think they tend, we tend to put, put them smaller up here. I think more so for your, your styling preferences and yes. things of that nature. Plus for whatever reason, I've even heard cosmetologists say you tend to have, I guess, more hair up here mm -hmm. than what you do in the back of your head. Yeah. 
Yeah, so it makes sense. So, I mean, I guess you're going to get that natural variability when you have sister locks just based off of what Melissa just mentioned. But I guess one of the key differences is that you can even find a larger variation amongst your lock size within your head mm -hmm. when you have micro locks versus certified traditional sister mm -hmm. locks. Number three, we kind of alluded to it, but a kind of segueing off of the size consistency is that grid pattern. Mm -hmm. I will insert photos of what a fresh sister lock grid pattern looks like, mm -hmm. but that I think Melissa arguably is the cornerstone of sister locks. We it is. That's it in a nutshell. Yeah. Yeah, because of that grid pattern that follows the... That's what makes you have sister locks. Right, precise standardization where it's like, you know, very, very specific. It, it gives that uniformity. It kind of standardizes sister locks. So like a master consultant can come and look at your head, look at your grid pattern and tell pretty quickly whether or not you have true mm -hmm. sister locks versus with micro locks, it's kind of like a free for all. It is. Some of yeah. them, I think, do try to follow a similar grid pattern, but it's not a necessity. Right. And then, too, even though you get sister locks installed with the grid pattern over the years, if it's not maintained correctly, you can lose it. Yeah. So then you will be no longer considered to have sister locks. You'll just have micro locks. Yes. Yes. And I know it's funny that you mentioned that, Melissa. Let's chat about that really quickly. In our last video, somebody commented like, I disagree with you that just because a couple of my locks were combined or, you know, some locks may have fallen out or, you know, different things have happened throughout the years and my grid pattern may have altered slightly. They're still sister locks. They're, they're not, not micro locks. They're not. And I'm like, but they're because if, if you go to Dr. Caldwell, who created these, she will tell you, you no longer have sister locks. Yeah. You will have micro locks. And that it's her. Brand. So that's the reason why it's important for you to follow your loctician's advice, as well as for you to make sure you have a loctician who knows how to maintain your grid. Exactly. Because this is an investment. It is an investment. And I mean, we've talked about the price of sister locks versus micro locks, which we will get into again in mm -hmm. this distinction list. But you're spending money to do this. You want to make sure that you're doing your due diligence to maintain them adequately and appropriately. Yep. Yeah. If you were to go to a, another loctician who does and you tell them, oh, I got sister locks and they see that you have all these combined it locks and you no longer have that grid. They're going to tell you, you don't have sister locks. Yeah. And I know that might be difficult for somebody to hear just because I do think there is this like sometimes attachment to the term sister locks. Right. Uh, and if you really think about it, as long as your locks look good and they're healthy and care. you love them, who, who really <laughs> cares? cares? Even me, as much as I love my sister locks, if somebody came, came to my head right now and looked at it with a microscope and said, you no longer have sister locks, I would not love my hair any less. Any less. I agree. Yeah. So it's still giving what I need for it to e give. Period. <laughs> <laughs> Next one. Number four difference between sister locks and micro locks is the certification requirement that we kind of touched on before mm -hmm. that the sister locks must be installed by a certified sister lock consultant or training or trainee to be considered authentic mm -hmm. now that is key because again it's a brand mm -hmm. people are out here claiming that they have sister locks when in all actuality if you're really a sister lock purist and you're standing true to that definition you might not necessarily really have sister locks in the system. Sorry. That's okay. See, we're doing our retightening. We're multitasking here. This is real life. This is what a retightening session looks like. If I didn't mention that before, but you guys have been here before. This is part four in the series. Make sure you check out the previous three in this installation to kind of learn more from a loctician's perspective on all things sister locks. But there is that requirement for certification in order for them to be true sister locks versus with micro locks. There is no certification requirement and anyone who knows, really anyone can do them. And you know, you can yeah. watch a YouTube video and figure out how to do micro locks and put them in your head and you could establish an incredibly beautiful hairstyle mm -hmm. for a fraction of the price. Mm -hmm. You know, but they're starting to increase in prices too on those. Yes. You're starting yes. to see them compete with sister locks. Then that's a perfect segue to number five. <laughs> Actually, number five is the cost difference. So in the past, usually 
sister locks have been considered to be more expensive because you are paying for that grid pattern. You're paying for the expertise of the sister loctician. Mm -hmm. You're paying for the brand mm -hmm. and the uniformity, all the things that kind of come along with having sister locks right. uh, versus with micro locks again, there, there's not that level of scrutiny, I guess, no. within that community. So I would just be sure that you get a lot of reference and get a lot of pictures mm. from true references. Now that's a very good when point. When you're dealing with somebody who's telling you they can do micro locks. That's a very good point. Because again, I mean, yes, they might tell you they know what they're doing, but this do is- Do they? Do they, <laughs> exactly. And is that a risk that you're willing to take? and money you're willing to spend. So yeah, the micro locks prices can vary based off of the installers just method and their level of expertise. And there's a little bit less regulation around that. So when I just did a quick Google search, I think micro locks, depending on your region, can start off anywhere between 500 and $2,000. And that's going to vary based off of the expertise or the experience of your installer or your loctician and your length of your hair, your size, because that's another thing. Micro locks can be a lot bigger than sister locks, which will take less time and will then save you a lot of money because mm -hmm. it's all about the amount of time that your loctician is going to spend. Or right? they can be way smaller, but yeah. That's that's a point too. They can be way smaller because within sister locks, you said there's pretty much a small and medium size, correct? You get three sizes. And then the large even though they're not large, but large by sister lock sizes are usually reserved for like brother locks. Right? Correct. Yeah. So definitely keep that in mind as well, is that if you're looking at your wallet and you really don't care about the brand of sister locks, you might be better off going the micro locks route to, to get what it is that makes the most sense for you, your budget and your lifestyle. Number six is the installation time. So sister locks, Typically, again, Melissa mentioned that micro locks can technically be smaller depending on the installer's preferences, but mm -hmm. typically because sister locks are so small, they usually take a lot longer to install due to the precise technique and the uniform sizing and that grid pattern that we mentioned, right, Melissa? Because mm -hmm. I think in a previous video, you mentioned that's why you're not a huge fan of doing establishments because of the whole grid pattern right. mapping out process. Right. Yeah. And versus micro locks, the time varies and can be shorter depending on the chosen, the chosen right. method. Yeah. So sometimes I have seen photos online where micro locks, like the loctician, they, they kind of try to have a similar grid pattern that the sister locticians do, but they don't have to. That's just because they're probably trying to be very thorough and they're probably trying to kind of emulate and get you as close to sister locks as possible. Mm -hmm. But they certainly, that's not a requirement right. for you to have micro locks. Number seven is the maintenance of sister locks ver versus micro locks. So with sister locks, the retightenings, again, similar to the establishments, must be done by a certified consultant or a trainee versus micro locks they can be retightened done by the wearer, even the person, like you could redo your own retightenings um, or anyone familiar with the interlocking or other techniques. So again, yeah. less and a person with sister locks, they can do their own retightening. We actually teach people to do it. And there's even a tool for that. Wait a minute, Melissa, I didn't know that. Yes. <laughs> I'm over here learning stuff too, guys. Wait a minute. I mean, not that I ever would. I have way too many So locks. if I wanted to self-tighten my hair, I could use this tool right here. Wow. Let me it's do, tiny. Let me do a But you in. put that in and you put your hair in there and Whoa. it kind of hooks it like this one and you just you guys see weave that? it in and out. This is what it looks like. So it's a small, it has that little silver thing at the end. I'm trying to have it zoom in. And this is, so this is a, like an official sister lock self-type. Self mm -hmm. Wow. And it just, like I said, you push the, the portion down and then it gives you the, the hook where you yeah. put your hair. That is interesting. Even though I will say Melissa is, a, you know, she's certified and she's, she doesn't even do her own retirement. Oh though. God, no. <laughs> I have 
everybody know people who do that are blessed because there's no way that's the thing so i'd rather sit there for two to five hours than have to take a whole week or a month i'm not doing and it because it will take so much longer i'm just gonna pay somebody do you ever do your edges no not even that mm, I, don't even, I don't even mess with my head so the fact she that she installed them and this is all her work you see, the fact <laughs> that a certified loctician herself will not do her own retightenings this Even my lactation, she doesn't do her hair either. Really? Mm -hmm. Do you she ever do hers? hers? No. Okay. Her, her, her and her cousin, they flip flop. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that is something to consider that the maintenance for, well, the maintenance for both. When you have small locks and they're kind of, they're interlocked, you're going to have to like commit to a regular retightening schedule. But I think it's just a little bit stricter when you have sister locks. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. Well, when you have tiny locks, period, you should get your locks done often because they can break off. Yes. It's not like traditional locks where you can wait because they're, you have such a larger base that you have hair that can hold onto it. But the weight of those locks, when they're tiny, they start to break off your, your hair. Yes. So every four to six weeks, we've mentioned it before, mm -hmm. but that's like the key that people with sister locks and micro locks and just small locks in general need to remember. Every mm -hmm. four to six weeks, you must go and get those retightenings. For those tiny locks. Yes. And I've heard before in the past a critique of sister locks. One of my traditional locked sisters, she was like, well, this is back when I was considering getting them myself. Mm -hmm. And she was like, Tib, be careful. People lose locks a lot with sister locks. They do. And I was terrified of that because I was just like, wait, I don't want to like have my hair falling out. And now in hindsight, from what I'm learning from Melissa and just through experience, that that could be a function of them just not keeping up with their retightening enough. Go. So really remember that if this is something that you want to do, you need to make the commitment to regularly get your hair retightened. You can't just get them done and think that there's nothing that, that that's it. If that's the approach you want to look for, then maybe sister locks or micro locks might not be for you. And maybe traditional locks might be more your speed. Mm -hmm. And that's totally okay. I mean, locks are beautiful in they all of their forms. I yes. agree. Now I will say just as an aside that I did have postpartum hair shedding after having a girl with all this hair. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it's like you're not immune to it. Even if you have a lot of hair, you're not immune to it. Even if you have locks, postpartum you're hair shedding not. was a thing for me. Mm -hmm. I did post a video on how I reattached those locks that have fallen out. So I'll go ahead and link that for you guys to check out as well. Number Eight, we've kind of mentioned it before, but I do think it's just important for us to mention again, is the, the Sister Locks tool. The, the specialized tool that is unique to the Sister Locks technique. There's a reason why these locticians go and get this training so they can learn how to effectively use the Sister Lock establishing and retightening tool to, to give you Sister Locks. Like right. that is like the founder, Dr. Caldwell, she spent so much time and years perfecting this brand she did. that you're, you're, you're buying into that and you're, you're, you know, becoming a member of this, I guess, sister locked community mm -hmm. for a reason. And as a part of that is the special shampoos, the special mm -hmm. tools that she formulated specifically for this brand she of Microlocks. And for my first, I say five years, I did everything. I was strictly sister locks. You did the shampoo, the shampoo for the first five and, years. And yes, everything. Wow. <laughs> and you see how amazing her locks look. Now she was everything. more disciplined than me. After I, I got a little bit of, once I started establishing <laughs> in that first year, I started going to my cheap shampoo because it's a little bit pricier than your typical shampoo that and it's just it. a little bit different it didn't foam up as much now see your hair your hair kind of like my best friends y'all have that hair that's gonna hurry up and lock yes i have so many different textures and my hair is kind of fine yes and so it took longer it took almost three years for my hair to completely lock and you see that's another thing to mention i know it's a little bit different than the you know than the differences between sister locks and micro locks but there's a lot of variability within locks. As you can see, both of us have sister locks, but because her natural hair texture is looser and mm -hmm. finer than mine, mm -hmm. it took her hair a lot longer, longer to lock than mine did. I feel like my hair locked within like nine months. It was like, it yeah. was quick, but I that have my very best for <laughs> C hair. So just her. kind of keep those expectations. Just know what it is that you're getting yourself into when, when you're doing your research, depending on your hair texture and, and all that stuff. Right. 
Number nine, we've mentioned it kind of already, but a big difference is the trademark and branding. Mm -hmm. Dr. Caldwell is big on her branding. She's even has brand ambassadors. Mm -hmm. Like she wants people to know what sister locks are. And this is more of a movement for her yes. than it is a hairstyle. It's like a lifestyle. Like it they is. go on cruises and like, mm -hmm. like there's a whole movement. I feel for like there's sister lock merchandise. I feel like I've seen before. You probably have. Like it's, it's a thing. And I, I respect it. I'm a part of the community kind of loosely. I'm not going on the sister locks cruise personally, but I love my locks and I get lots of questions and I kind of become like an unofficial <laughs> ambassador for sister locks, if you will, mm -hmm. because of just, my love for them and my willingness to just spread information about sister locks. Yeah, so, and she's even like, even her instructors were wanting her to raise the price of the course. Oh, wow. Because they were wanting to be paid more. Uh, she wouldn't do it. Yeah. She wouldn't do it. Because she stands she by her want, brand. Yeah, she stands by her brand. She wants this to be accessible to all women. Yes. But of course, the community's taken over with their prices. Yeah. <laughs> I guess you kind of, the, the supply and demand, if that's what they're charging, that's what they're right. charging. Right. So because of the trademarked brand with specific guidelines within Sister Locks and that training, it does come with that community support that she mentioned. That's actually the next point. But I just think that that is something to kind of remember when you are looking at those Sister Lock prices, that because of the trademark and branding that Micro Locks don't necessarily have. Micro Locks is more of a general term just for small That's it. sized locks. And again, we mentioned that you don't even have to do the interlocking method for them to be considered micro locks. You can do braiding, you can do toot and twist, you can do a lot of- Crochet. Cro oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, you can do crochet as well. So just keep in mind that branding is one of the key differences. And last but not least, number 10 difference between sister locks and micro locks is that community and support. So because Sister Locks does have that dedicated community and network for the maintenance and support and training. Again, that comes with a bit of a heftier price tag, but it also comes with, I guess, peace of mind. In you have a headquarters, you can go and report. So if somebody exactly. don't do your hair correctly, you can go and report them to the Sister Lock headquarters. Yes. And that just kind of, I think, keeps the authenticity it of does. the brand. It does. And I personally think that is very important because it is like that big community and it is such a powerful brand and such a beautiful way to represent yourself mm -hmm. and your hair that's just standing that they stand behind their brand so much to a she point does. where she's oh. gonna keep people in check you know mm -hmm. and with with micro locks you don't necessarily have that official community or network although there are some informal groups and resources available like on those facebook groups or in um on instagram or on TikTok. And just even within the community, you might see a woman down on the street and be like, are those sister locks? And she might tell you, not really, these are micro locks. And then you can just like inquire from, you know, word of mouth to join in on in that community. So it's more of an informal community for Sorry the micro about locks. My dog. It's all good. You, you hear the dog in the background. He's part of the <laughs> he's part of the movie. <laughs> so yes, that community and support definitely does serve as a distinction between the two. Have you enjoyed having that community within the sister locks? Oh yeah. And then you'll even notice that too, even within your, your local areas. I know here for where we're at, all of these locticians, they know each other. Mm, it, the they, they know each small, other. So they, true. right. And they can be supportive. So I like it because you can always get answers and things of that nature when you have questions. So And referrals. I've yeah, mentioned before referrals. in the past, I found her loctician on Google when I was moving from Cincinnati to Kansas City and she wasn't taking any new clients. She referred me to Melissa mm -hmm. and it's been chemistry ever since. Yep. And I'm not sure if they have that within the micro lock community, but I certainly do appreciate it within the sister lock community. All right. So yes, you guys, part four of this Loctician Speak series. I hope you enjoyed it. Drop down in the comments if there's any point on here that you want me to elaborate on, maybe do a part two, or just if you're enjoying this Loctician Speaks series as much as we have been. Um, Melissa, do you have anything you want to add? No, just yeah. help you help you find your journey and, and go on it. Yes, yes. Thank <laughs> you so much for joining us as usual, Melissa. I appreciate it. Not a and problem. And go ahead and make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to join the family, guys. And I will catch you on the next video. Peace.